This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Pendleton Ammunition, loading ammo one round at a time. This week, Travis Price is headed out to one of our ranches in Southwest Wyoming. This is a property where we've been booking hunters for years, but Travis has never been there personally. It was important for him to have firsthand knowledge of the ranch, the hunting style, the lodge, and the operations there so that he can properly advise and book our hunters to this property. It's about a 10 hour drive from our office here in Northeast Oregon, down through Idaho and Utah. And it was well after dark when I crossed the border into Wyoming and arrived at the lodge, which makes an incredible first impression when you arrive and see all the lights. The first order of business was to sit down with the ranch manager, go over the rules for the hunt, and sign my deer license and conservation stamp. With these formalities out of the way, I went to bed eager to get out there the next morning. I came in while it was dark and I had no idea what the land looked like or what to expect. I only knew that this was an incredible mule deer property. The terrain in this area of Wyoming ranges from high mountain aspens down to sagebrush covered rolling hills. And while deer are scattered from the high timber all the way down through the property, Travis and his guide Brett are focusing on the area where the sage meets the aspens. Brett's tactic is to get up high and glass vast areas of the landscape and see as many deer as possible from one spot. Use those spotting scopes and binoculars to hunt smart and look over those bucks before they get into the heavy cover and bed down for the day. Even though it's early October and the rut's still a month away, it's still common to look at over 15 to 20 bucks a day on average and even see twice that many when conditions are right. This is a high deer density area. And on this hunt, Travis just needs to be patient and just know that they will find the right buck. We use the Jeep to move from high point to high point, glassing and spotting deer. This ranch is an incredible 90,000 acres in size. So we have a lot of ground to cover, but there is also a lot of topography. So we have to look it over closely and not overlook a big buck that might be bedded or feeding in a depression, as these are the bucks we are looking for, the ones that know how to hide. Even in this open country, most deer are killed between 100 and 300 yards, which is point blank range for most any modern rifle and cartridge. But to extend Travis's effective and ethical range, we set him up with the new Bergara B14 Hunter rifle, chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum, and topped the rifle with the Burris Eliminator 3 laser scope. Combined with the custom hunting loads from Pendleton Ammunition, this was a rifle that Travis could easily reach out 700 yards and beyond if necessary. We got in late last night and didn't have the opportunity to zero in the rifle, but did it today and it's right where I left it. But it's always a good idea to check it after you've traveled and went over some bumpy roads. So real happy with where it's shooting and see what we can do tonight. The wind was howling when we went back out for the evening hunt. Brett thought we should get a closer look at some bucks we had seen at a distance in some lower meadows that morning. So we parked the truck and snuck up on top of a small hill overlooking the meadows, and we started spotting deer immediately. In this open country, the key to success is being able to spot deer from a distance, a half mile away, even two miles away. Look at them in a good spotting scope and be able to determine what they are and then move in on a good buck once you find one. We had spotted a couple deer in the distance and they looked like good bucks. It was a brief glance, but we knew they were worth a closer look. These deer were moving pretty quickly in the wind and were working toward cover. So Brett and I closed the distance and got set up on them.
They were within range and I was set up. We looked them over closely and while the bigger of the two bucks was close, it just wasn't what I was after. Especially on the first day of my hunt on such an incredible property. So I passed him up and we kept on hunting. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles. A passion for precision. Every barrel, every rifle. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. So we're at it early again this morning. Looks like a very clear, another clear day and might get a little wind again, but very similar conditions to yesterday. We're gonna head back out to where we finished off last night. Um, there was a large grassy meadow with you know, 20, 25 deer in it and there was some bucks fighting and although we're losing light, we saw that there was some potential bucks in there. So we're gonna head back to where we were yesterday and continue on and stay positive, stay patient and continue in the glass and see what we can come up with. Just after first light, we spotted this big buck bedded down and he was a hard one to walk away from. But Brett thought we should keep hunting and assured me that there were larger bucks out there. It's on our way down to Glasses Meadow here. Brett happened to look back on the ridge behind us and spotted a couple bucks and we put some, uh, some glass on them and they're both four by fours. One's a little better than the other. Potential shooters. Um, they've bedded now so we should have some time. We're gonna just check them out all on our original plan and possibly go back, head back up and take a look at these other bucks. So pretty promising morning so far. Going into the second day of his hunt, Travis knows the lay of the land and really what to expect in terms of terrain and quality of deer. And while a lot of work lies ahead, I think by this time, he knows that he's hunting somewhere special. Brett knows his stuff, and I was confident that he would find a big buck. We walked into different spots and glassed up a lot of country. And looked at a lot of deer. But we just hadn't found a buck that we both thought was a shooter. And later that afternoon, we spotted several deer down in a green meadow that at a distance appeared to have a big frame and warranted a closer look. Unfortunately, there wasn't a buck there that was big enough to put my tag on so early in the hunt. By this time, I had looked over 30 or 40 different bucks. And I was positive that the best hunting was yet to come. So we're about out of light. Day's come, coming to a conclusion. A uh, great day though. Had some four by fours that we decided to pass. Tonight, a couple big three by threes. Again, passed on them, but Lots of bucks, lots of deer, lots of fun. So tomorrow's a new day and looking forward to it.
This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped ready to shoot. The third morning of my hunt started off really fast with a lot of deer out feeding and we spotted a buck I thought might be big enough. The problem was that there were literally dozens of deer in small groups between us and him and the wind was wrong. So there's a big flat out behind me here. I was just crawling with deer. Um, they're all over the place. It's going to be tough to, to get in there, but we have spotted um, a decent 4x4 buck. Um, there's a couple, a couple other bucks that are worth taking a look at as well. So lots of deer. Pretty exciting. We're going to go take a look. So we started out circling the area. We had to first get the wind right, all the while trying to keep the buck in view, which was impossible given the terrain. We knew right off that this was going to be an all day hunt if we were going to get close enough for a shot. We just popped over the hill here from, from where we were glassing those other bucks. And we're looking in this bowl and we spotted two bucks right away, both four by fours. Good forks, pretty tall, but pretty narrow. It's good to see this many bucks though. Encouraging morning so far. Once we had moved into position, where we thought we could make a play on the buck, we couldn't find him. He had bedded down. So now we had to get set up and wait for the deer to get back up and start feeding again. So we stayed in our position, downwind and out of sight. It was late afternoon when we started seeing deer up and feeding. So we started covering the area. And just before dark, we spotted the buck feeding. Brett quickly took us on a stalk down through the aspens and into a position to take a shot. Once we had got set up, we realized that there was more than one buck in front of us. And as light faded, we had trouble figuring out which one was the biggest deer. And by the time we had it all sorted out, we had run out of camera light. I was pretty bummed out. He was a great deer. Travis just found out that hunting for the camera has its challenges, but he's a professional. 
and his guide is a world-class mule deer hunter. Brett knows that as they slip out of their undetected under the cover of darkness, that the next morning they will likely find that buck right where they left him. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. The fourth morning of my hunt, I had a good feeling. Cloud cover had moved in. The winds had laid down and it was nice and cool. This all meant that the deer would be out feeding longer before they headed into cover to bed for the day. And we were really hoping that the bucks we had left the night before would be right where we had left them, in the sagebrush and feeding in the open. But we had a long hike to get there. And in this country, it pays to hunt your way in, so you don't bump or pass a buck in the dark. Well, we're back in where we were last night. When we're set up on that, uh, that buck, and this will be the third time we're trying to get on him, so we're just gonna head into the aspens here a little bit and see if they're in the same spot they were last night. We'll go check it out. Once we got back to the spot where we had set up the night before, it wasn't two seconds and Brett had spotted the feeding buck. And he was within rifle range. So he scrambled and got set up for a shot. The sagebrush in front of me was too high to lay prone and shoot off my bipod. So I grabbed Brett's tripod, which made for a steady rest. I ranged the buck at 340 yards in the eliminator scope and waited for the perfect broadside shot and squeezed the trigger. I am a meat hunter and I aim for that area right behind the shoulder and the bullet hit exactly where I was aiming. I know a lot of people look for that infamous TV drop shot where we take the animal through the front shoulder, but that wastes a lot of meat on a deer. The bullet performed perfectly, and in seconds the buck laid down and was dead. And a few minutes later, we went over and found him in the sagebrush. actually the third time we were on him, I believe. Definitely the second time, but I believe it was the third time. Third time's a charm. <laughs> Had the opportunity to take this nice buck, so couldn't be any happier. Awesome 4x4 buck in Southwest Wyoming. Thank you so much again, You're Brett. Welcome. Good job. My pleasure. And thank you, of course, Mr. Steve West for allowing me the opportunity to come out here and, and learn the, the outfit and the terrain and be able to harvest this beautiful buck and 
get back to the office and be able to explain what an awesome hunt this is and be able to connect others to this hunt. While some tremendous bucks are taken off this property every year, this is a real typical deer for this area of Wyoming and exactly what our clients can expect to find on a hunt here. And it was just what Travis was looking for. A buck with antlers well outside the ears, tall and with deep forks. And now, Travis is well educated on this property and how to properly advise our clients thinking about booking a hunt here. But Travis's venture is not over. He is transitioning across the border and back into Utah, where he has an elk tag. It's early October and the rut is in full swing. But you'll have to watch that hunt during next week's show. In the meantime, if you'd like to book a mule deer hunt on this ranch or any other guided big game hunting adventure, please give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week for another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures.